Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout, joined by Alan Malventano. We are here today to discuss, not the first, is it the first multi-terabyte, two and a half inch hard drive, or SSD, I guess I should say? Two and a half inch, two terabytes, consumer SSD. Okay, so if we, if we put the moniker of there modifier been, of, yeah, uh, I mean, of consumer on it. There, there have been enterprise ones, but they're not seven millimeter thicknesses like the standard. Okay. You know, they're much thicker, they use SAS, they're, you know, or different interfaces. Gotcha. Right. So this is the Samsung 850 Pro and the 850 Evo, two terabyte SSDs. Yes. Other than the capacity increase, which is a huge jump now from one terabyte, there's no 1.5, right? There is not. We just go from one terabyte drives to two terabyte drives. Uh -huh. What changes other than capacity? Uh, as far as specs, uh, nothing. Okay. In terms so of like rated specs performance? Yeah, the ratings are identical between the one terabyte and the two terabyte. Okay. Um, and I mean, that's everything across the board. They didn't even, I think they should have, but they didn't like double their endurance rating or terabytes written or any of that stuff. So we're looking um, at the same controller, a different controller? Different controller, uh, MEX controller, which I would imagine is just a faster iteration on the, uh, let's see, what was it, MGX and... Sure, next letter down. Uh, yeah. So... Or MHX, sorry, the new one is MHX. Do you, do, you mean, do you think they made that change because there was some necessity to address the additional storage or was it just like, well, we're making another one, we have another controller revision, let's just use that? Yeah, it's probably a couple things because um, first of all, there's twice the DRAM in these as well because typically you, you would double the DRAM if you doubled the flash okay. capacity of pretty much any SSD, right? All right. Um, and not only that, so now you're dealing with two gig of DRAM for two terabytes of flash, mm -hmm. and there's, you know, all SSDs have a table to look things up in that deals with where the data is stored on the flash compared to where the operating system requested Think it from. So. Yep. We're doubling all that, right? right? So every time you double that, you, you're kind of running up at odds with the, you know, just the ultimate capability of the controller, like how fast is the controller, how fast can it do those lookups. Gotcha. So um, I wouldn't go as far as say this controller is twice as fast necessarily, but it's probably, you know, able to handle things differently, able to address more memory, more flash, that All sort right. of thing. Speaking of the flash, what changes on the flash? Are we just seeing twice as many die that we would that we saw in the one terabyte version? So on the Evo, we're seeing twice as many. Okay. Uh, like just ba basically the packages hold twice as many dies as they did on the one terabyte Evo. Okay, makes sense. Um, the Pro is a little bit of a different story. We don't have an absolute answer yet, but um, there's much more detail in the article on this. But what it looks like is the Samsung has made the dies slightly larger for that model specifically, so that they can mm. fit two terabytes of dies that, like the highest I've seen them stack is uh, in, in a package so far is 16. Mm -hmm. So for that math to work, they would have to have added some more capacity per die, right? So we're, we think that's what happened, but they haven't confirmed we, or... They haven't confirmed either way. The press release is really vague. You know, it's just a Is there an advantage to doing that? Is it is it just like a cost savings thing for them or is there something else to it? No, it's just a matter of fitting you know, that much flash in an SSD. So that might actually be why Samsung specifically has waited this long to release two terabyte drives. Maybe they needed larger dies, hmm. like slightly higher capacity dies compared to what they had before. So what do we see in terms of performance on these two drives? Uh, what we see is mostly identical to the one terabyte models, which we've already reviewed months back. So there um, are performance differences between the 850 Pro and the 850 Evo. We're just saying like the 850 Evo two terabyte, mostly similar to the 850 Evo one terabyte, 850 Pro 2, very similar to the 850 Pro 1. You can say that, but also at capacities this high, they're generally the same. Okay. Right, when, once you get really, really large, you're not so worried about the turbo write uh, kicking in on, mm -hmm. uh, on the Evo because the triple level cell writing speed of this is actually faster than SATA. Okay. And, and that was the case as far back as even the one terabyte model of the Evo like once it ran out of cash and went into triple level cell mm -hmm. writing, you couldn't tell. Okay, it that's was good. It's still going full speed. But there are a couple of oddities that you saw? There was an oddity we saw with the two terabyte Evo specifically, uh, and I, the question is out to Samsung on this, they're looking into it, but I, I think it really just boiled down to just some kind of a firmware tuning thing really more than the... What, when, what was the oddity, what did you see? Um, when we went through our iometer testing, and that test made it you know, halfway through the test, normally an Evo, when it runs out of cash, you see a little dip mm -hmm. in those curves, right. right? The curves are just kind of, do, all of a sudden, they'll just dip down to like a, a lower curve, right? Gotcha. Um, this particular model behaved much differently. The curve actually shifted over to the right. In other words, it didn't ramp up as fast. 
hmm. like that still had the high speed at the end that we would expect. It just took, you know, a higher Q depth to get it there gotcha. uh, compared to before. So that's the kind of a thing that I think a user would actually notice because we always say that, hey, it's the low Q depth performance that's an issue, and the low Q depth performance of of this particular Evo when you really push it uh, is roughly half hmm. of, of what the one terabyte model okay. was. So. Uh, again, I don't think it was a uh, like a controller limitation or that they just can't make this work any better. I think it was just like an oversight in tuning, really. Hmm. All right. Now, the most important question, of course, is pricing. Yeah. We're getting into high, high capacity SSDs, you're, I'm a little bit worried about where that is in terms of pricing. It looks like the, so these, we, as of we recorded this, we couldn't actually find these for sale yet. Right. But the MSRPs from... Samsung lists the 850 Pro that I'm holding up here, two terabyte model, at $1,000. It's 50 cents a gig. Good math. Mm -hmm. And then the 850 Evo, two terabyte, at $800. That's 40 cents a gig. 40 cents a gig. Yep. So uh, that kind of falls in line with where those drives are at today. We, we usually see the 850 Evos a little bit like in the 30s cents per gig range. Like not 30 cents, like but in the mid 30s. Yeah. High 30s. 38, yeah. 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 So it wouldn't surprise me if when this actually does go on sale, give it a week or two, this will also kind of come down to that to that realm. Right. So I mean, the idea here is now we've, we've got a two terabyte, if I focus on this one, because mm -hmm. this is I think what most people will end up buying. I believe so. Versus the pros. A two terabyte Evo for let's say it's 700 to $750. Mm -hmm. That is a big number on the surface, right? Because but you're you're buying a huge amount of flash. You're buying two terabytes worth right. of flash, right? So even if it is thirty cents a gig, I still think it's still I, a lot of money. I right? still think we're in the area where it's like, oh man, that's for this tiny little two and a half inch that's thing, seven hundred and fifty dollars. Just like when we talked about the PCIe NVMe drives, right? When you right. get up there, even though it's a lot of storage, in the cost per capacity yeah. is aggressive, mm -hmm. uh, it's still a large number. Yeah. Right? You think of where we're at with big video cards at $650, and now we're kind of asking $750 for a two terabyte Something that is a fraction of the size of drive. a video card. It's but just, yeah. it's important, right? It, it's, is. it is a very important part of the system design. So I, I think you'll see a lot of people going this route, because it's not like you're, you can get a two terabyte and it's $1.50 a gig right. to get that extra capacity in a single drive right. letter. You're getting it at a fair uh, uh, price, I think. I, I will say that the, the person that's probably going to spend this much on one of these probably has a desktop. Yeah. Or I they have so. or they have some sort of kind of a high-end like gaming laptop that probably has multiple bays. Yeah, maybe. So if two terabytes is the number you need, I think those people might be leaning more towards just a pair of one terabytes to raid together. Some people just don't like that complication. That is true. But, um, but that know, is an option, right? Yeah. You could buy two one terabytes, might be maybe a little bit less than a, than a two terabyte, and do a raid zero. And you increase your speed. You do. Um, yeah, but uh, but I sacrifice of some complexity. But I still think there are going to be people that have a laptop with just one drive bay, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know maybe in a little bit of an older one that doesn't have MSATA, although these are probably going to come out in MSATA and M.2 eventually, right. right? We expect them to happen. I mean, we're what I like about the two terabyte is is like you're 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 kind of at that edge where maybe you don't need a regular drive. Like if you yes. do a lot of cloud storage. You should be able to fit all your stuff on a two terabyte SSD. Well, you really. know, it just depends on, you know, <laughs> Ken's got a lot of music, you've got a lot of music and stuff. Like there's, there's some things, you know, I have a Dropbox account that is, you know, is a terabyte, a terabyte of size, yes. right? So there's some limitations there, but everybody's use case is gonna be a little bit different. But with two terabytes, you don't have to worry about like, I need to manage my Steam library of games regularly right. yeah. in order to do that. You so should I'm be excited able to about fit this. All of your Steam downloads on the if if not, you're probably broke from buying Steam games. Sometimes you just buy and download just to keep. The Steam I games on it would cost more than this. It depends. Even just got saying. some 70 gig games out there. Uh, so check out the full review. It is at PCPer.com. Alan has all the benchmarks, and we'll have links to uh, Amazon and Newegg when these things actually go on sale. So be sure to check that out. And uh, keep checking back at PCPer.com for all of our other reviews and content as well. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Thanks.